Cults are pretty fascinating. They believe some really insane and outlandish things, yet despite this, they always seem to gather a lot of members and become very popular. And while we might find cults and their beliefs very funny, they never end well, do they? Shoko Asahara. Shoko Asahara was born on March the 2nd, 1955, under his real name, Chizuo Matsumoto, and he was born into a large family of impoverished tatami mat makers. He was born with infantile glaucoma, which caused him to lose all of the sight in his left eye and most of the sight in his right eye. Because of this, he was enrolled in a school for the blind, but apparently, while he was at this school, he was a bully who would beat other students and take their money. At least according to eyewitness reports. After he graduated school, he ended up working in acupuncture and traditional medicine, which was a really common career for blind people in Japan. He ended up marrying and he fathered 12 children. In 1981, he was convicted of practicing pharmacy without a license because he was caught selling unregulated drugs. And it was roughly around this time that he started taking a massive interest in the various religions and spiritual teachings from all around the world. And he engrossed himself in learning everything that he could about them. In 1984, from his one-bedroom apartment in Tokyo's Shibuya Ward, Shoko Asahara decided to start a new religious order that he named Om Shinrikyo, which roughly translates into Religion of Truth or Universal Supreme Truth. And it was around about this time that he changed his name from Chizuo Matsumoto to Shoko Asahara. Shoko applied for government registration to get Om Shinrikyo recognised as a legal religion. The authorities were very reluctant at first, but after an appeal, Om Shinrikyo was granted government recognition as a legal religious corporation. Om Shinrikyo borrowed teachings from pretty much every single religious and spiritual order that existed, everything from Christianity to Buddhism, from Nostradamus to yoga, and for some reason they even borrowed some teachings and prophecies from Isaac Asimov's science fiction novels. Shoko claimed that he had the power to cure illnesses and diseases and that he also had the power to absorb the sins from a person and transfer onto them magical and spiritual powers and his ultimate goal was to absorb the sins of the entire world so that they would be prepared for what was to come. But what did he mean when he say what was to come? Well, it just wouldn't be a cult without a doomsday prophecy now, would it? Shoko told his followers that the world was going to come to an end in a nuclear war that would be started by America and the entire thing would be instigated by certain groups of people that Shoko very often blamed for all of the world's problems and conspiracies. The people that Shoko Asahara would always blame for the world's problems and conspiracies ranged from rival Japanese religions, to the British royal family, to the Dutch for some reason, to the Freemasons and it just wouldn't be a conspiracy without them. The Jews. Shoko said that only those who joined Om Shinrikyo and were enlightened would survive the end of the world and afterwards they would together rebuild a better civilization based on the foundations of Shoko Asahara's teachings. But what made Shoko Asahara the man for the job? What made him so special? Well, it was because he declared himself the Christ in his book, Declaring Myself the Christ. But obviously, a cult needs members. So Om Shinrikyo's PR team got to work in creating media that they could send around to all the outlets and spread the word. Most of these at first were just videos on Om Shinrikyo's teachings and meditation, some of these even featuring Shoko Asahara himself. Shoko even took himself on tour to do some public speaking, where he was very often wheeled out on stage like an in-flight dinner as well as making a little bit of money while he did it. Followers paid thousands of dollars to be blessed by Asahara, to drink his blood or tea brewed from his hair, and to wear the Orm's trademark headgear, fitted with electrodes, supposed to transmit the guru's brainwaves. This was taken even further, and Shoko and his cult members actually started doing full-on TV appearances, teaching Japan all about their strange religion through yoga positions and extremely informative displays like this. (laughs) 
And for some reason they also televised really, really creepy dances. There was also one very special interview that Shoko Asahara did. Does this man look familiar? That's Takeshi Kitano. The guy who played the teacher in Battle Royale, he was also in Ghost in the Shell, but arguably his most iconic role was as Count Takeshi in Takeshi's Castle. The leader of a doomsday cult managed to get an interview with everyone's favourite happy clappy jappy chappy. But it doesn't stop there. Om Shinrikyo's PR department set out to do something that would probably be the greatest and most entertaining thing that they ever did. They made an anime. そして Despite how ridiculous all of this PR was and how stupid their beliefs were, this worked. Loads and loads of people started joining and Om Shinrikyo eventually had around 10,000 members. But Om Shinrikyo didn't attract the poorly educated, the poor or the destitute, you know, the type of people that cults usually attract. It attracted some seriously rich people and people that had qualifications from some of Japan's most prestigious universities, which ended up giving Om Shinrikyo the vision of being a religion for the elite. Now where have we seen that before? So the cult was starting to grow in membership. Lots and lots of people were starting to join. And in the process they would sign contracts and documents that would sign all of their wealth and possessions over to Om Shinrikyo and the cult. But things only got weirder from there. They started doing public displays to sort of show off the magical powers that they had gained through becoming enlightened by the cult. Some of these included depriving themselves of food and water for a long period of time and then submerging themselves in very hot baths. Another one was several cult members were actually buried underground with no food and water for six days. Shoko and his followers even went as far as to try and get elected to the Japanese parliament. So on their election campaign they travelled around Tokyo singing and dancing and spreading their teachings. They, they lost the election. In order to try and spread his religion, Shoko Asahara travelled to Russia with the intent of opening an Om Shinrikyo branch there and this resulted in 30,000 new members joining Om Shinrikyo from Russia. Through the connections that he made with his new Russian members and also a few bribes, Shoko was able to make connections high up in the Russian government and these high up Russian government connections is something that Shoko would keep aside for future plans. However, a lot of people started to take notice. A lot of people in Japan were starting to get really, really suspicious of the cult and their behaviour. The cult started running hospitals that would lure people in for treatment, and then once the treatment was finished, they would hand them an extremely massive bill to try and extort money off them. They were also bullying their own members even more to get them to hand over even more of their money and assets. And the most worrying thing was people who wanted to leave the cult, or people who simply criticised the cult, would just mysteriously disappear.
So public suspicion of the cult was at an all-time high, and in 1992, when Om Shinrikyo rented a building in downtown Tokyo, people got even more suspicious, because the building's windows were completely blacked out, no one was allowed in or even near the building, and any time residents approached the cult members that were guarding the building to ask what they were doing, they refused to give any information. The local residents started to watch the building, and they started to document and take photographs of any suspicious goings on that they seen, and one of the main things that they noticed was there was a lot of strange looking equipment being loaded into the building. Then one night, everyone in the neighbourhood was woken up by an extremely noxious smell that was wafting through the neighbourhood, and so everyone got up out of their beds and charged towards the Om Shinrikyo building, which is where it was coming from, and they started screaming and shouting at everyone they seen. They even actually managed to surround Shoko Asahara when he was trying to leave in his armoured Mercedes. But despite this, it took inspectors two weeks to actually come out and inspect the building, and by that point the building had already been emptied. It's almost like Om Shinrikyo were given time to clear out, it's almost like Om Shinrikyo knew the inspectors were coming. Whatever project was going on in this building, it was then moved to a more rural and secretive building, where work on it continued. And shortly after this, a really strange event happened in the city of Matsumoto. Residents of an apartment block in the surrounding neighbourhood were woken up by an extremely noxious smell, and then people started actually falling unconscious, so panic spread throughout the whole apartment block and the neighbourhood. As a result of this strange gas, seven people died and hundreds of people were hospitalised. But funnily enough, the apartment block in the neighbourhood just so happened to contain the homes of three judges who were overseeing a land dispute case that Om Shinrikyo were involved in and were losing. But even despite that, the police and Japanese intelligence didn't suspect the cult. They actually thought it was North Korea. Shoko then received information that the police were coming for him and they were going to open an investigation. So Shoko decided to do something that he already had planned for another purpose, but he was going to do it earlier than anticipated to divert the police's attention away from him. 20th of March 1995, five members of Om Shinrikyo board five separate metro trains, all of which are passing through Kasumi Kaseki district and Nagatacho district which is the headquarters of the Japanese parliament. All of these men are carrying umbrellas with pointed tips and parcels wrapped with newspaper. And in each of these parcels was two sealed bags of chemicals which, when combined, create sarin gas. While on the trains, the men sat their packages on the floor and stood up to get off the train. Right before they left the trains, they would stab the packages several times with the pointed tips of the umbrellas and then they would leave the train. The train doors would then close and the train would carry on its journey, while the packages on the trains were mixing together and creating sarin gas, which was evaporating throughout the train carriage and would then go on to contaminate the train, every single station the train stopped at, and then finally the target districts, which the trains were all scheduled to arrive at at the exact same time. People on the targeted carriages started coughing, choking, going blind and falling unconscious and when the trains arrived at their next station, everyone would jump out of the targeted carriages in a panic and the train station staff started removing the unconscious people from the carriages. But the Japanese train staff, you know, being, being so damn efficient with their metro system, simply told commuters not to abort the affected carriages that had the packages in them, but to board all of the other carriages attached to the same train. And then they just sent the train on its way, where the sarin packages and the affected carriages could contaminate every other station along the way, as well as spread to all of the other carriages that were attached to it on the train, which it did. In some cases, the station staff actually removed the packages from the trains and just left them lying there on the platform with all the people around. In another instance, one of the train staff who actually removed the packages collapsed, so his fellow train staff picked him up to take him to a back room. It was a little small concealed back room that had about five people in it. What they didn't realise is one of the train staff who came in to actually help them take care of the unconscious man was holding a bin bag with the packages in it and he just left it sitting on the table 
in this small compressed room so that he could help them assist to the unconscious man. And basically every single person in this tiny room got poisoned. To be completely fair to the station staff, they had absolutely no idea what was going on and they had no idea that this was a chemical attack and it's something that they'd never been trained for. This was like the only terrorist attack that had ever happened in Japan since World War II. So they had no idea, so you can't blame them too much for this. Ultimately, every emergency service is imaginable. Even the military were deployed to all of the affected stations in full hazmat gear so that they could rescue people. And everyone knows that the Japanese metro system is famous for being extremely crowded. <laughs> it, it, it was bad. Ultimately, the attack instantly killed 12 people, seriously injured another 50 who died at a later point, and thousands of people were injured by the effects of sarin gas. All hospitals and medical centres in the area were completely filled to the brim with people needing treatment. There were even some people who were left severely brain damaged by the effects of the sarin gas and they're now permanently disabled. There is footage of interviews with these people but I'm not going to show it because it's actually quite upsetting. Now you might think the five guys who carried out this attack must be pretty stupid, dim and easily led people. But that wasn't the case. Two of them had degrees in applied physics, another had an honorary degree in applied physics, the other had a degree in artificial intelligence, and the fifth one was a senior cardiologist. Ironic given the circumstances. So in the aftermath, what did the five attackers do? Well, when each of them got off their trains and got outside the stations that they got off at, they were being waited on by other Om Shinrikyo members in getaway vehicles so that they could escape. All five of them were carrying sarin antidote needles and some of them had to actually inject themselves with the antidote because they'd accidentally poisoned themselves. All five members then met up at Om Shinrikyo headquarters to give themselves a nice little pat on the back for a job well done. But little did these scum fucks know that that was going to be very short lived because the police and the army, enraged by what happened, went in on the cult. They went in with no lube and they went in hard. A force of 2,500 combined police and military personnel instantly raided 25 Om Shinrikyo owned buildings as well as all of the homes of all of the members. 400 cult members were arrested and 50 children were taken into care. Some of the children were even wearing the stupid cult headgear as they were being taken away by the police. In the end, there was a grand total of over 500 raids. The public were even out for blood. While the police were actually escorting one of the cult members that they'd arrested, a member of the public, obviously enraged by the sarin attacks and uh, obviously inspired by your boy Yamaguchi, just killed the cult member in front of the cops and in front of the entire crowd. Yes, there is footage of this. No, I'm not showing it. The cult did try to retaliate for all of the raids and over the next few months they tried to carry out four more metro attacks but luckily all of these failed. But seeing two of the attacks, see instead of using sarin gas, they tried to use Zyklon B. The police chief who was in charge of the operation against the cult was actually ambushed outside of his home by cult assassins and they shot him four times and somehow he managed to survive. The cult also sent a letter bomb to the Tokyo governor but unfortunately it was his secretary who opened it and it exploded in her face. She survived but I don't think she takes many selfies anymore. And after months of being on the run, the cops finally managed to catch the big fish. Shoko Asahara, and then they started building their case against them. And they had tons of documents and evidence. Every single cult location that they raided contained tons and tons of documents detailing every single bit of information about the cult. And when they started going through it all, they realised just how deep this rabbit hole went. Firstly, they managed to discover that Shoko Asahara had actually gained assets worth around a billion dollars. So the man had some serious money to play with. When they raided the chemical labs, they found that the cult weren't just making sarin gas. They were also making botulinum toxin, anthrax, and VX nerve gas. They also discovered that the cult had actually murdered 46 of its own members that wanted to leave the cult or who the cult believed were spies. And in some cases, the cult used the chemical weapons it was making to do this. Also, remember the stunts that the cult was doing earlier? 
with being submerged in water and being under the ground for six days. Well, it turns out that before going on TV to do these stunts, the cult had to make sure that they could actually be done. So they did a bunch of private test runs with a bunch of cult members. And during the test runs, a bunch of these cult members died. And so what happened was the cult got rid of the bodies by having them secretly cremated. Another thing the cops discovered was in relation to an anti-cult lawyer called Tatsumi Sakamoto who was actually planning a lawsuit against the cult. Sakamoto recorded a secret interview with Japanese TV station TBS who were going to edit the interview so that his identity would be kept secret. But someone who worked at this TV station most likely a member of Om Shinrikyo who was employed there, managed to get the raw, unedited footage and handed it over to the cult, basically revealing Sakamoto's identity. The next month, Sakamoto, along with his wife and child, disappeared. And while the cops were going through the cult's documents, they discovered that the cult had actually kidnapped them, murdered them, and then disposed of the bodies. And the cops found loads of cases like this in the documents. There was loads of cases of ex-cult members and their family members who planned on blowing the whistle against the cult would mysteriously vanish and it was because the cult was kidnapping and murdering them. The cult also made a failed assassination attempt on the Japanese royal family by spreading botulinum toxin everywhere they could outside of the royal palace. Documents also revealed that the cult were responsible for the Matsumoto city attack, the one on the apartment block that contained the judges from the land dispute trial. It turns out that the cult had actually used a modified refrigerated truck to spread the gas throughout the whole neighbourhood. But wait! There's more! There's a reason that Shoko was always one step ahead. It's because Om Shinrikyo members had managed to get jobs in the Japanese security services, the police, and the Japanese military, and they were constantly feeding information back to the cult. And now that the cops had all of this information identifying who these people were, they all got arrested too. The sarin gas attack was carried out earlier than anticipated, but the cops managed to discover what its original purpose was, which was to blame the attack on America to kickstart World War 3 and fulfil the doomsday prophecy. And then the cops discovered arguably the most batshit thing that the cult had planned. Remember those uh, top Russian government connections we were talking about earlier? Well it turns out that during Shoko's time in Russia, he arranged for Om Shinrikyo members to receive military training, as well as purchase weapons ranging from AK-47s to RPGs, as well as a helicopter. And all of this was brought back to Japan. And where did they get all of this from? Directly from the Russian army. Th this was Russia in the 90s. You could get anything you wanted if you had the money. But what was all of this for? Well, it turns out that the plan was for these Russian-trained cult commandos with their AK-47s and RPGs to abseil from the helicopter into the Japanese Imperial Palace to assassinate the Emperor and his family. So you could say the cops had quite a lot to go on, and so began Shoko Asahara's trial, which ended up lasting for eight years. Hundreds of cult members were convicted for a vast array of crimes. Of the five guys who carried out the Metro attack, four of them were sentenced to death, but a fifth one wasn't, because he cut a deal and snitched on everybody else, so he got life in prison instead. And Shoko Asahara himself was sentenced to death. But that isn't where it ended. Shoko's daughter, who actually remained anonymous for a number of years, eventually went public with who she is and campaigned to get her father a retrial because she feels his original trial wasn't fair because he was mentally ill. <laughs> Putting it nicely. However, despite her efforts, in July of this year, Shoko Asahara was executed by hanging. And there's still executions going on. 13 Om Shinrikyo members were executed by Japan this year alone. There was some last year and there's probably going to be even more next year and this is all still in connection to the 1995 attack. But here's the funny thing, see, despite it being so long ago, Om Shinrikyo still exists but in two forms. One form is the original organisation itself but it's changed its name to Aleph and they're extremely apologetic about the attacks and they denounce the attacks and they've denounced Choko Asahara himself. They make sure that they stick to the straight and narrow and they only focus on the positive, nice teachings from the cult, but they are a complete shadow of what they once were. 
However, in 2017, they did get raided five times for extorting money from their members, just like they did back in the day. The other form are the followers that still have absolute fanatical devotion to Shoko Asahara, even after everything that he did, and even after all these years. These are the ones that have managed to hide from the police, and they keep their beliefs very secret. But they're all still out there, and it's very easy to weed them out. All you need to do is talk shit about Shoko in public. The funny thing is, a few days after I actually wrote this video, there was a van attack in Tokyo and at first I thought it was terrorism related because, let's face it, it usually is, until I seen that the guy was a Japanese national and he said that the reason he did it was in revenge for all of the executions. So even though I said that some of the cult are still out there, hiding, maybe they aren't going to hide anymore. I bet none of you were expecting any of this from the little weirdo that you were all giggling at at the start of the video. But it's good to know that he finally met his doomsday. After a quick drop and a sudden stop. Burning hell fat anime Jesus. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe.